Hello everyone, I'm Colin Simpson from the Televisors Network. Welcome to our first webinar for 2021. Today we're going to take a little bit of a look at uh, MS Teams for teaching and for the Televisors community and have a fast, slow chat. So I'm just going to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which many of us are meeting today. In my case, it's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Just uh, if you are not familiar with the Televisors Network, we are a community of practitioners uh, made up of people working as education technologists, learning designers, academic developers, and people in a host of similar roles, um, because there are at least 40 or 50 different titles of people doing this kind of work. So we'll kick off though with Dr. Amanda White, Amanda is the Deputy Head of Accounting Discipline at the UTS Business School in Australia, and she's been teaching accounting at the university level for almost two decades. She's best known for loving auditing YouTube and integrating educational technology in the classroom to enhance student learning. She's recognised as a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and has been awarded the 2020 National Teaching Excellence Award for Law, Business, Economics and Related Areas by Universities Australia as part of the Australian Awards in University Teaching. Congratulations. So over to you, Amanda. Thanks and hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. So to those people who don't know me, my name is Amanda. Uh, I have pink hair in the photo on the screen there. I think I have pink hair in this one. It, it, my hair is a different colour depending on the mood. And I tell my students I do that to hide the fact that I'm going grey. So I want to thank the Televisors for having me today. I just want to acknowledge that I'm on Darug land here uh, out in Western Sydney and um, that our UTS campus is on Gadigal land for, of the Eora Nation. So welcome everyone. Um, I welcome uh, chat on Twitter as well, as well as chat here. I'll be keeping my eye out. But I've used Microsoft Teams for a couple of years now for teaching. Uh, inspired by a lot of the work that's been done at Griffith. So I think Griffith had the first sort of Microsoft Office 365 uh, sort of big event. And I couldn't go to that, but some colleagues did. And, and I was really keen to find out more. So what is the standard operating environment at UTS? Uh, we have just migrated over four years our learning management system from Blackboard to Canvas, which is very exciting. Uh, we have Office 365. Our staff collaborative platform is Microsoft Teams and we use ProctorU for online invigilation. Now, it wasn't always like this. Um, I've always been quite progressive in trying new things with technology. And uh, when Canvas came out, I thought, great, excellent, H5P, I could do all these fantastic things. However, my subject was very last on the list. And uh, in 2020, pre-COVID, we actually had approval to move our entire subject into Microsoft Teams. And the only thing I use my LMS for really for Blackboard was exams and students loved Teams over Blackboard. It just miles on all the student evaluations. It was how good is Teams? How good is the class notebook? Uh, they really liked having their own version of it. So it's been really, really a, a nice uh, experience. So a bit about my teaching. I teach a final year subject just before the capstone. Um, and it's about learning how to make complicated judgments during the audit of financial statements. So if you invest in a company, if you've got superannuation, you are an investor. And every year, management prepare a set of annual reports and to make sure that they're not just making stuff up and that they're all reporting according to government regulations, they have an audit of the financial statements. We actually tell shareholders if something doesn't look right, is the wrong number, is, is incorrect. So that's the subject and it's about 250 to 300 students per term running uh, twice a year. 50-50 domestic international split. Uh, most of my students are studying accounting as well as usually studying finance or some other major as well. Not all students want to be accountants. Um, at the moment, 60% of my students are located here in Australia and then about 40% of them are overseas. And last year, Probably at the beginning of COVID, that mix was a bit different. 20% you know, of students were still stuck overseas, um, but we've seen an additional large number of students decide over 2020 to 
travel home. So uh, they decided you know, their part-time jobs had evaporated, so casual work was non-existent. And uh, if they knew that classes were going to be available for future periods, future semesters online, they would prefer to study uh, from home where they can have a slightly lower cost of living. So see their families, etc. So we've seen an actual bigger demand for online classes. And uh, I don't know what everybody else's experience has been like, but we have had more demand for classes at the afternoon time slot. So from sort of 3.30 onwards, right up to 7.30. I have never opened so many 7.30 p.m. tutorials in uh, my entire 20 career year career at UTS. We would always schedule some, but we would you know, buffer most of them and only really run one online class that late at night. And now we've seen a huge number of students, both internationally, because 7.30 is uh, still early afternoon in a lot of Southeast Asia, but a lot more students who are local choosing to go to work during the day, come to uni at night. So there's been a big demand for online, and I don't think online's ever going to go away for us, um, especially with a lot of uh, articulation programs and a lot of feeder programs still enrolling students and students studying remotely. So I'm seeing quite a, a big preference for some students for online. We still have lots of students come to class. Out of my current cohort of 280, about 100 choose to come onto campus and the rest come online. So I, I give a flipped learning delivery. I don't give lectures. Um, we make videos. Uh, we have annotations. We use quiz activities, Microsoft Forms, um, as well as H5P. And then students come for a two hour workshop online. So three hours was just too long. I didn't, I couldn't hold their attention span for that long. But they come for two hour workshops on campus or online. So my current setup, uh, delivering learning to cater for both sets of students. I've built everything in Microsoft Teams and I've built everything in Canvas. And we're doing a lot of evaluation from students about um, what works in different areas and, and we're collecting a lot of data from them about what they're preferring. Uh, students who really like handwriting notes and doing their own notes are really loving Teams and the class notebook. Uh, students who would prefer to type notes tend to find that they like Canvas, so that was quite interesting. Um, student discussion all happens on Teams. Uh, I really dislike learning management system discussion forums. I can't like a post. I can't thumbs up something. They're just, I have to click on each thread. It, it can be really uh, cumbersome. And if you've used Canvas, you can't tell which questions in the discussion forum are unread. So, you know, there's a thing that will sort of show you how many messages are in there, but you need to click in each one. I just find that maddening. So uh, I just don't even use them. I just say we're not using the Canvas discussion forum. Everything is in Teams. And, and that also means that we have more of that natural social conversation. Uh, and that's why I moved uh, to Teams in the first place. So I actually went to a very early presentation with David Kellerman before he became Microsoft famous. And I saw what he was doing and I thought, this is really cool. My learning activities, I built H5P and forms activities in both places. For assessments, I have to use uh, Canvas for our invigilated final exams. That's sort of a, that's a professional accreditation requirement. Um, and then I use Veeple and I use Qualtrics. So Veeple is a video interviewing software. Qualtrics is the survey tool. And that's because I can't use branching quizzes. There are no branching quizzes inside Canvas. Um, you can use branching quizzes inside uh, Microsoft Forms, but once you get to the end, if you go back, 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 you can unbranch the quiz and then uh, collect, uh, put the correct answers in. So uh, yes, that was that's sort of a, a bit of an interesting one. Um, and then I have a final exam uh, that sits inside uh, Canvas with Prop2U. So pre-Teams and pre-COVID, lots of viewing activities. Students were always viewing stuff. They were doing activities but I only had 40 discussion posts on the discussion board and only I replied. So 40 posts, 40 replies, it was 80 all up. Um, what we saw once we went to Teams is that the number of interactions, I think the number of posts by students increased maybe three or four fold into the hundreds. And then there was a lot more interaction. I would say something, a student would say something back, someone would say, oh, what about this? They could 
quickly copy and paste in a screenshot. We could have thumbs up reactions. Um, post, to, you know, Teams has made a big difference in that interaction, especially when we were uh, learning remotely, or we still are. So I shifted to Teams for the social learning environment. It's mobile friendly. So I really like that there's a, a good app for my phone. Um, it's a real world collaborative tool. So we say to students, look, I think the uh, Microsoft line is that 90 out of the top US 100 companies use Microsoft Teams. Um, we ask students in the class, look, whose workplace uses Teams? Oh, I'm at Coca-Cola or I'm at somewhere else. So we're saying, hey, this is a great line to add in on your LinkedIn CV. Nobody adds on their CV. I know how to use Blackboard or I know how to use Canvas or Moodle or D2L because that's unless you're going into an educational role, that's not a workplace platform. And we love tagging. So the fact that I can tag the whole cohort, one student, students can tag me, um, that means that there's a lot more real time support. What that also means is there's a bleeding of the lines of what is work and what is not work. And I guess for me, I was always quite responsive to my students. Um, and so now, yeah, if I'm standing there and I'm boiling the kettle and to make rice for dinner and I get a Teams notification with a student who has a question, while I'm standing there waiting for it to boil, I will jump on and I will respond to that question straight away. Um, or if it's something that I think we have student ambassadors, uh, some of my student ambassadors, I will wait sometimes uh, for a student ambassador to jump on. Um, but sometimes it's, oh, Amanda, I'm trying to do, you know, this assessment, something is happening and I can get on with results straight away. We also do this when exams are on. So we actually have a Teams meeting that's open that students can jump into on their mobile device anytime. If during the online exam they experience a technical problem, then they can jump on and just quickly get a hold of me rather than going on to proctor you support or waiting. Yeah, you're, you're 25th in the queue um, on an online support line. So it's that real time uh, be able to have support for students there. So this is what my teams looks like inside. Um, I have a, a general area that's where I post my announcements of what's happening this week. Uh, here's something I want you to fill in. Um, we have quite a lot of complex decision making and during the week I will ask students, okay, I've got three potential activities this week. Which one do you want to do? They vote um, and we use the votes to help the students co-create what the workshop is going to be like. Then I have six modules and then the students can ask those questions in those modules. It's all nice and neat and tagged. I have a non-audit section where, you know, we do things like share the most weird thing that you've seen this week. What is everybody eating? Uh, you know, study spaces, that type of thing. I have some private channels that work for specific assessments done by specific students. And then I have a virtual office. So rather than wait on campus, though one of the days I do do my virtual office on campus. I sit in a cafe on campus with my phone there. Um, and the great thing about this is now I can have virtual office twice a day or sorry, twice a week rather than setting up, okay, this is the one hour or the two hours we're going to be uh, set up. So it's really nice um, and uh, I, students are quite enjoying that. So I also use SharePoint pages to convey information to students. Um, I can do this now in Canvas and we do do this in Canvas now as well as online. Um, but in Blackboard, I couldn't, it was really clunky to create some nice pages with infographics and things so that students could clearly see what all the assessment tasks were and what they're all about. Um, oh, this is my virtual drop-in session where students can just drop in. And that means it's flexible. I can do it ever, anywhere. Uh, tomorrow, I am going to the hairdresser for, I, I'm giving the keynote at my university teaching and learning awards on Wednesday. So I'm going to my hairdresser on Friday. Um, and part of that time will be when I have virtual office hours, so I can just set my phone up and, and away I go. So it's nice and flexible and that also helps as a, a parent, a working parent, sick kids, being different places, um, virtual office for us has really made a difference. And more students come to see me now that I have a virtual office than trying to come to campus to see me. Um, I also use a virtual boot camp. So my students uh, come to class, they're supposed to come to class every week, they're supposed to do exercises, they're supposed to do follow up exercises, then they're supposed to follow up in teams, but not everybody does that, less than 10% of students actually do that. Um, and because of the cohort, 
uh, we create a little boot camp. So because they're mostly studying alone and I wanted to create a feeling of community, I now have a boot camp where um, I have 10 days of activities after the last day of class. Each activity takes students 30 or 40 minutes to do. They have a special channel to do it in. Um, and you know, day one, there is a PowerPoint uh, file for them to go into. There's an activity on the first page, and then there's a template on the second page. With the template, they just make a duplicate of it. They put in their responses. And if they do it by that day at four o'clock, I actually give them some specific individual feedback. And so we want students, and I also mark which um, submissions for the day were the best. So students have to put their first name on them, but we mark the best ones of the day. Students can quickly put the PowerPoints into sort of that view of seeing all the little tiles, and they can see my little image that I use to highlight the best ones of the day. They can quickly go to those. And we're trying to build that evaluative judgment that um, you know Joanna Ty and, and David Bowd talk about uh, quite a lot, which is looking at my work, looking at the work Amanda has marked as the best, and figuring out where there's a difference. So students can see everybody else's work. It's this great collaborative tool. And we found it um, pretty exciting for students to use. I used to use Facebook to do it because trying to do it in Blackboard was a nightmare. But um, out of all of the students, oops, hang on, oh, I went back too far. Um, about 20% of students completed one or more activities and every single one of those students passed. So it, it's a great, imp that, that statistic is one that I show to students. Oh, look, if you want to pass, do these activities. These are really great. You can get to talk to other students as well. About 30% of students failed the subject. And the analytics that we do get indicate that they were less visibly engaged. They, were, they had less time on Teams, less time watching videos. Um, insights isn't great, but it does give you some data. Not as much data as the LMS. And Microsoft's video hosting platform Stream gives you no analytics. I tried to write an analytics paper on it for Simon Buckingham Sharma, and I realized there was nothing to write about because <laughs> there weren't any analytics. We also use Microsoft Sway to cre create websites. Um, we have supplementary exams, for example, and we use Microsoft Bookings. So students have to book in for a supplementary exam because it's an oral interactive. And those people who are at Griffith might know Danielle Logan. Uh, we were inspired by a lot of her work there, Danielle and Poppy's work. So we use bookings. Students can book in a time that suits them. It fills in my calendar. It fills in their calendar. It automatically creates a Teams meeting. And boom, we can start the exam straight away. So stream, uh, as someone said, it, it will happen, give it time. That's in relation to stream analytics. That's coming, um, and I think part of it will be migrating where Stream lives into OneDrive and SharePoint. I'm not exactly sure on the technicalities of it, um, but yeah, we're, we're loving using it there. But there are some struggles. So I, the biggest struggle <laughs> is my university IT department. Uh, so IT policy and control is that in Teams, we have no access to assignments. So I can't assign students to do anything and track their progress in Teams. Uh, some universities do have it, which if you've got it, leap onto that. That's great. Um, there is some lack of functionality with Apple Mac. So we did try to run breakout groups now exist in Teams. It's great. I've done been in rooms where there have been breakout rooms. It's been fantastic. Um, our first time of running a large meeting with 200 students needing breakout rooms of, uh, I think, I think we had breakout room, 40 breakout rooms, and the whole thing just uh, sort of crashed. Uh, it just didn't really <laughs> make it uh, all the way. I couldn't see students. Students couldn't see me. Some, only about a third of the students made it into a breakout room. Uh, so I don't know whether that was my side of things because I'm on a Mac or whether it was just a uh, bad uh, option here for us. So oh, some people don't even have calendars. Some people have assignments. Like I'm, I don't want to use it for assessment, but I just want to be able to keep track of what students are doing. So yeah, so that's that's sort of a, a big thing. Large meetings. I think 250 is the number of is the maximum number of students we can have within a meeting. So if you wanted to have more than that, you have to have a live event that has some of its own issues. Um, yeah, and, and breakout rooms aren't exactly stable. I've reported that to Microsoft and our, our lead has been really great in trying to look at that. Um, 
The other thing with Microsoft tools is that we're looking into Power BI as a data analytics tool for our students. What we've discovered is Power BI desktop doesn't run on a Mac. And I said, well, can we boot camp the Macs? Like, can we teach students how to boot camp their Mac so that we could run it on a Windows partition? Of which I said, oh, I don't think that, again, Power BI will run on a boot camp section. So there are some little issues uh, with some of the Office 365 things. Yeah, and uh, somebody has mentioned here with uh, teams and assignments, it's either on for the whole institution or it's off. So that's um, a big issue there. Uh, Colin has written virtualized. We are looking at virtual machines uh, and virtual environments for that potentially, but still very early days. As you all know, uh, it takes years to get something approved and integrated. Uh, a question here about data retention on Teams assignments. Yeah, I don't use them, so it's not, not a big issue. Um, what a lot of people don't even realize is they can archive their team. So you don't have to delete your team. When you go to roll the team over the next year or create a new one, you can create a lot of the same structures. The only thing it doesn't move over is your SharePoint pages. So that can be a bit of a, um, bit of a, a weird thing. Turnitin does work. There is a Teams Turnitin integration. I believe as well that um, exists. So that's used uh, quite a lot in the K to well, not K to 12, but in the seven to 12 market. Um, what I hear from a lot of the MIE experts is that they are using Turnitin a little bit later on. So my tips for making Teams a success. I'm trying to keep to time here. Clear instructions on how to navigate Teams. I had to teach my students every single week for the first four weeks. Remember, here is where Teams is. Here's how you do something. Here's how you ask a question. Um, the infuriating reply button and new conversation button. Now that we have new conversation, that's a lot better. But we always had students starting parts of threads in new conversations. Teams is great for faster communication, preparing students for the world of work. Um, but set expectations for student response times. I have a colleague who only answers emails to students one day a week in a two hour block. So. If that is your preferred, that is someone's preferred style, putting them on Teams infuriates students more than, than anything. Um, so just be reasonable with response times uh, and training students to post questions on Teams. I do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Social presence, it's that feeling of community. Yeah. So uh, it, I th actually, I think that person might have taken a voluntary redundancy, but you know, we do have some people who say, you know, Teaching is only a small part of my job and these are the hours. You have to email email me and uh, if I get to your email within these hours, I will respond to it. So that, that hasn't gone down well. But uh, you know, informing students as to expectations. They know that I'm busy. So you know, they know that uh, an email that comes in at five or a message because I'm off to pick up the kids and do other things. All right. So uh, I think I've answered all the cues as they've been coming up. Am I on time, Colin? Oh. Or any of the moderators? We'll see if there are any other questions. You'd think I would have learned not to be on mute by now. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Amanda. That was wonderful. Um, so if everyone can just show their appreciation. Uh, if you do have additional questions, please feel free to um, uh, keep answering in the chat. You're going to stick around, Amanda? Yeah, I can stick around for the next half hour. Fabulous.